Hi everyone, welcome back to Snitch Talks, a project by Italian Quidditch Association. <laughs> Today I'm here with Jorgen Stellock and he is from Norway and he is the seeker of NTNUI team and uh, uh, he was uh, the, seekers, uh, the seeker of the Norway national team during the EG in Bamberg. So first, uh, Jorgen, welcome to this new episode and thank you to be here uh, to share your experience with us. <laughs> yeah, no worries, thanks uh, for having me. <laughs> so uh, can you say something about you and your story with Quidditch? So when did you start uh, to play and why? Yeah, sure. So I started playing in uh, 2013. Uh, so I've been around for a bit uh, by now. Um, I moved to, to Trondheim in Norway to study and then uh, our university had a, uh, let's call it a somewhat unstructured team at the time. Uh, but I joined the, I joined the practice and it was, uh, it was like pretty fun. It was just a, a bunch of people sort of like running around and, and having fun. Uh, and then I uh, had a bit of a knack for it as well. So uh, then I kept on playing and then uh, I've been like pretty involved uh, ever since. Okay. Thank you very much. You have participated to a lot of tournaments, uh, national and international, and probably you have uh, you got a lot of memory among people, experience. Uh, but um, probably this experience changed your way of playing as a seeker. And uh, do you think that it's true? Uh, it's a good question. I think I think it's naturally for the the game to to evolve. And when you played uh, play Quidditch for for a couple of years, when you've been in the scene for a bit, uh, the sport itself sort of naturally evolves as more and more people join and people get more experience to sort of discuss the game and, and figure out uh, strategies and tactics. Uh, so I think there's like a natural evolution of the game that you just sort of follow. Uh, and personally, I think the the biggest change in in my play style. Uh, is more a uh, sort of deeper understanding of how the game uh, works and how the pieces interact together and, and sort of being able to play a bit more smartly than just sort of like running at, uh, at the, uh, the snitch. Okay, and uh, how can you describe your style of uh, seeking, if uh, you can describe it? <laughs> Because, uh, I mean, uh, every seeker and every snitch has a different style of game. Uh, for example, there are uh, more physical uh, snitching and seekers uh, and are that, um, that, are more, uh, that have more agility than the others. So how can you describe your style of game? I think I'm definitely more towards like the, uh, the agile end rather than like the brute force uh, end. Um, so uh, trying to sort of like sneak around more than trying to sort of overpowering the snitch. <laughs> Okay. Um, and I try to work well with my beers, which I think is uh, like an advantage that a lot of uh, that a lot of teams are like utilizing to the, to the best extent. In your experience, uh, um, you met a lot of people probably, and uh, there are uh, are there any snitches or seekers uh, that you would like to play with, uh, and why? If you have uh, someone uh, in your mind, oh, there's a. Um... There's a lot of uh, good people in the in the community. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> both, both snitches and, and seekers. Uh, uh, yeah. But uh, but in general, I think like all the uh, all the snitches who like sort of consistently snitch uh, finals and, uh, and and the seekers as well who sort of like make the the like top top parts of the bracket. They're all really fun to watch uh, and also to to play against. Mm. Um, yeah, like the, the counterplay when you play play seekers isn't like that that heavy at least when you're both trying to, yeah. to go for it so it's not the same as when you play chasers and get to sort of go uh, <laughs> like directly toe to toe against uh, against other players uh, but uh, yeah you definitely have, have several good people mm. okay and in your memory there is a, a game that you remember very well because you feel very excited or stressed uh, yeah i mean <laughs> uh, you can't really uh, ask that questions without uh, getting uh, getting the expected answer, I guess. So in, you can see in 2017, uh, yeah. uh, we beat Titans and I caught the snitch. So uh, I think hey. that's definitely like the, the highlight, like the highlight point uh, of, uh, of the years I've played so far. It's been uh, a lot I of good moments, but uh, I it's can't like imagine. a standout moment. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, absolutely a good match and a good memory. 
So just a curiosity, um, do you have a tradition before starting the game? I mean, uh, do you need uh, a, a, lucky char a lucky charm or uh, you need to talk to someone or something else? Uh, because uh, everyone has uh, a different uh, uh, kind, uh, tradition before starting a game to, um, to stay strong and to stay positive uh, before of the, of the game. Uh, I don't know yeah. if I explain myself. <laughs> no, 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 I got it. So I don't really have like a like a set tradition or like a, a thing I need to do. Uh, but it's more about like a, a mindset. And I think that's quite yeah. normal. You try to get into like a competitive mindset where you get a bit fired up and, and ready to play. Uh, so you sort of get in the in the zone to start playing um, at your top level. But uh, but no, I don't have any like specific like rituals that I need to go through. Okay, and uh, listen, uh, this project uh, was born uh, uh, to uh, improve the level of uh, Italia's niches. So uh, I would like to share with you a video of an Italia's niche, and uh, I would like to uh, analyze it with you, if for you is okay. So we can, um, I can, I can have go. your opinion of uh, Seeker. <laughs> Uh, I just would like to know if, uh, in your opinion, in your opinion, if you uh, will be uh, in front of the snitch, uh, what you would like uh, to do, or uh, what uh, you, uh, what do you see? Mm -hmm. I see one thing that's uh, that's pretty good. I don't know what the, the teams are here, but the, the like uh, dark blue purple team, mm -hmm. uh, the seeker definitely. He he was zoning off the other seeker, which I think is uh, like very important. I think it's uh, it's like. Uh, underused and then people do it too little uh, so he had like a nice nice moment where he stepped in between the other seeker and sewn them away uh, so there was no chance that the other team could catch and i think that's like a hugely important uh, part mm. of the, the snitch game mm -hmm. okay uh, other than that it looks like the beaters are sort of pretty active uh, it's uh, it's a swim game and then the, the beaters are on the snitch uh, which I think uh, is a consensus uh, to be uh, to be like the correct place to put your beaters. So that's good. It's a nice attempt at a dive. It's working. So yeah, okay. I don't, the seeker looks uh, looks pretty like big and big and sturdy, hard to like get past. So uh, you just need to sort of like try to dive around and, and uh, throw yourself at them. There is the catch. Uh, it's pretty nice. Snitch is oh, in yeah. a pretty low position there. Uh, so does like a pretty good move with going over, I think. It's a nice catch. No, so no, the mark. catch was <laughs> good. And uh, talking about uh, the performance of the seekers, uh, um, do you have any technical advice or exercise stuff to suggest to to do in also in I don't know if this period of isolation is uh, <laughs> could be good uh, for the <laughs> yeah, for, right, the, for the training. But uh, when uh, the situation uh, will over and we can uh, come back to the pitch to for the training, uh, do you have uh, any exercise uh, to suggest uh, to people that uh, are watching us? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's hard, as you say, to do anything now with COVID, but uh, when we eventually can start doing normal practice again, uh, the the stage practice is twofold, I think. So you have one part that is like the technical part of, of trying to catch the snitch. Um, and then uh, I personally find it good practice just to go one on one. Okay. You take one seeker and one snitch um, yeah. and then you just try to technically um, out maneuver the snitch and, and just practice moving your arms and, and getting around and grabbing the tail. Uh, and then just get in sort of like the hours and, and time needed to uh, be comfortable with emotions and, and just have like ran through it several times. Um, and then we have a have a drill where you just play, uh, you basically just play a normal game, but you take out all the chasers. Uh, so that simulates a, a swim game pretty well. Mm -hmm. You have two beaters and one, uh, one seeker on each team. Uh, and then you basically just try to catch the snitch. Um, and that's a good way to... Uh, sort of remove the the uh, confusing aspect of like a chasers running around and then you can communicate with your beaters and, and work on the, the synergy there uh, yeah. and how to to attack the snitch uh, together on each team in the in the snitch game and 
we need to, to work together as a unit. Yeah, again, thank you very much uh, for uh, your time and for uh, for the sharing of you, of your experience uh, with us. Awesome. And uh, I hope to see you soon. <laughs> yeah, let's hope for tournament soon. <laughs> yeah, we hope uh, we hope it, we hope it too. And uh, everybody, thank you to spend your time with us too. And I hope. Uh, uh, to see you again uh, soon, every one of you. And uh, from Oles and Jorgen, goodbye. And see you on the in the next episode of Mitch Talks. Bye, guys. <laughs>